It had no bones, no eyes that made sense. Its mouth was on a stalk. Its body was a riddle pressed in stone. Discovered in ancient shale beneath Illinois, it's been called a worm, a fish, a slug, even an alien. And decades later, scientists still can't agree on what it was. This is the story of the Tully monster, the prehistoric creature that defies classification and may not belong to any known branch of life. Before the dinosaurs, before the rise of reptiles, even before sharks ruled the sea, there was a swamp. Roughly 307 million years ago, the region we now call Illinois was a steaming coastal delta, dense with ferns, lepidodendron trees, and rotting vegetation. Rivers twisted into shallow seas. The air was thick with oxygen. And beneath the water, things moved. The Carboniferous period was a time of giants, dragonflies the size of falcons, millipedes that stretched six feet long. But hidden beneath the surface lived something stranger, something soft-bodied, something impossible to place. It lived in murk and shadow. It didn't leave bones, but under perfect conditions it left something better, an imprint. Welcome to Maison Creek, a fossil site unlike any other. Here, when a creature died, it could be swallowed in mud and sealed in ironstone within hours. A natural time capsule, preserving not just bones, but tissue, skin, organs, color. It's one of the only places on Earth where we can see animals that were never meant to fossilize. And among the thousands of strange impressions found in Maison Creek, one fossil kept appearing again and again. Not a fish, not a worm something else. Long and ribbon-like, with eyes on stalks, a narrow pointed tail, and a mouth perched at the end of a flexible trunk, a fossil that looked more like a surrealist painting than anything in nature. It didn't match any known creature. No modern parallel, no obvious lineage. The name they gave it? Tullamonstrum gregarium, the Tully monster. And from the very beginning, no one could agree on what it was. At first glance, it looks simple. A long, soft ribbon, a tapering tail, eyes, a mouth. Nothing more. But then you look again, and nothing adds up. Telemonstrum measured about 35 centimeters long, just over a foot. Its body was soft and segmented, with a narrow tail that split into two vertical lobes. It had a notochord, a stiff rod running through its body like a primitive spine. But it wasn't a fish. It wasn't even clearly a vertebrate. Its most bizarre feature? A long, flexible proboscis that extended from its head, ending in a jaw-like claw, complete with small, sharp teeth. Not a mouth in the traditional sense. A grasper, almost like a robotic arm tipped with pincers. No other known animal has this setup. It's unique in the fossil record. Then, the eyes. Positioned far apart, perched on rigid stalks that stretched across its head like a barbell. Inside were spherical structures resembling melanosomes, pigment-bearing organelles found in the eyes of modern vertebrates. But here's the paradox. The more scientists looked at it, the less it made sense. It had features of mollusks, arthropods, annelids, and chordates, but it wasn't clearly any of them. No gills, no skeleton, no shell, just a soft tissue and mystery. The fossil showed a creature built like a predator, but with no known relatives, no clear ancestors, and no evolutionary context. Telemonstrum wasn't just hard to place. It was biologically rebellious, a soft-bodied enigma from the Carboniferous Dark, one that still refuses to take a side in the Tree of Life. To understand how strange the Tully monster is, you first need to understand what it's not. Because for nearly 70 years, scientists have tried to answer one basic question. Was it a vertebrate or something else entirely? In 1966, when it was officially named Tullamonstrum gregarium, there were no solid answers. Some thought it might be a type of worm. Others believed it was related to mollusks, maybe a free-swimming slug. A few even suggested it was an arthropod, 
like a shrimp with a very bad designer. But the real chaos began in 2016. That year, a team of researchers published a landmark paper claiming the Tully monster was, in fact, a vertebrate. Specifically, a distant cousin of modern-day lampreys. The evidence? Eye structures that resembled vertebrate melanosomes, a cartilage-like rod running along the back, a possible notochord, a precursor to a spine, even signs of gill sacs. It seemed, finally, the mystery had cracked, but not everyone agreed. Within months, another team published a direct rebuttal. They argued the features were too vague, that the structures weren't conclusive, that the so-called gill sacs could be folds, that the melanosomes weren't uniquely vertebrate at all. What followed was a scientific standoff, fossil imaging, CT scans, morphological analysis. No definitive answer. To this day, researchers are still divided. Some say it's a stem vertebrate, a bizarre offshoot from early chordates. Others think it's entirely outside the vertebrate lineage, an evolutionary dead end. Either way, the Tully monster remains a biological orphan, claimed by many belonging to none. When bones aren't there to tell the story, you need light. Not just any light, light that can see through stone. That's how we study the Tully monster today. Using synchrotron radiation, scientists fire high-energy X-rays into the fossils, revealing structures buried in stone, just microns thick. Every detail becomes visible. Soft tissue, pigmentation, microscopic textures that normal scans would miss. These aren't guesses, they're maps of ancient biology. In 2016, researchers used synchrotron scans to examine the creature's eye stalks. Inside, they found two types of melanosomes, pigment cells typically found in vertebrate eyes, one for sharpness, one for contrast. That pushed Telemonstrum closer to lampreys, but it wasn't a full match. CT scans revealed other strange features. No internal skeleton, no spinal column, no clear gill arches. And the notochord, still debated, some researchers went molecular. They tried to extract trace chemical signatures, iron, carbon, sulfur, hoping to match them with known taxa. Still, no verdict. Technology gave us clarity, but not closure. Because the Tully monster does something rare in science. It absorbs each new answer and becomes an even bigger question. One team finds evidence of vertebrate traits. Another says, that's not enough. The scans are clearer, but the lines they reveal, still blurred. We can model its body. We can trace its outline in high resolution. But the question still echoes, what was this thing? We may never classify it, but we can try to see it. Telemonstrum lived roughly 307 million years ago in the shallow coastal lagoons and muddy estuaries of Carboniferous, Illinois. Warm, brackish water, dense with plant matter, oxygen-rich, a place where soft-bodied creatures could thrive and vanish. Its body was flexible, long and ribbon-like. It likely swam in slow, undulating motions, almost like a cuttlefish or eel. Not fast, but precise. It had stalked eyes, positioned for panoramic vision. Useful in murky water, helpful for spotting motion from the shadows. Its proboscis, tipped with jaws, acted like a miniature grabber, reaching out to snatch worms, larvae, or soft-bodied prey. Not for chewing, just for grabbing and pulling in. The tail flukes, vertical like a fish's, that suggests it didn't swim like a whale. It flicked side to side, slicing through dense waters quietly. Some paleontologists believe it hovered near the bottom, drifting between reeds and detritus. A slow ambush predator. Or maybe a scavenger. It had no armor, no shell, and no sign of social behavior. It was likely solitary, quiet, elusive. Just another odd shape in a world already full of evolutionary experiments. But among all the strange creatures of Maison Creek, the Tully monster was special, because it left just enough behind to haunt us. Enough to be recognized, not enough to be understood, 
We can animate it, visualize it, name it. But deep down, we still don't know if we're looking at a predator or a puzzle that was never meant to be solved. In 1989, the state of Illinois declared it their official fossil, Telemonstrum gregarium, the only state fossil in America that no one can definitively explain. It's displayed in museums, printed on posters, sculpted in metal. But behind the glass, it's still a mystery, because science loves categories. Vertebrate, invertebrate, mollusk, arthropod. Every fossil gets a label, a slot in the evolutionary machine. But the Tully monster refused to cooperate. It wasn't preserved in amber. It didn't fossilize in bone. It came to us as a smear of soft tissue frozen in stone, a ghost with just enough shape to disturb the structure of everything around it. It shouldn't have been preserved, but it was. It shouldn't have survived, but somehow it thrived. And it shouldn't still be unknown, but it is. For decades, the Tully monster has been a thorn in the side of taxonomy, a challenge to what we assume about evolution, structure, and classification. But maybe that's the point. Maybe some creatures weren't meant to be solved. Maybe nature doesn't care about our categories. Because the Tully monster did live. It moved. It hunted. It vanished. And it left behind a fossil that doesn't answer a question. It asks one. But what if Tullamonstrum wasn't the only soft-bodied mystery that time almost erased? In the darkness of deep time, how many more creatures simply didn't fossilize at all? What monsters are we missing? 